day health. Insightful. Bash your head into the wall a bunch of times. No. Hey guys, let me know if you can see and hear me, okay? Actually, okay, I'm gonna turn up the volume, so be prepared. Did I just, like, break your speakers? Okay, I don't see any chat. I hope my chat's working. I hope I'm not disconnected or something. Okay, cool. Carrie just messaged. Can anyone see me or hear me? Or am I talking to nobody? There aren't a ton of people. Okay, Vanessa says that she could see me. Woo. Can anyone else see me? We can see and hear you. Is it is the audio quality okay? I know it's dark in here, but look it. It's not dark in here. Like, when I get closer, it brightens the screen. I cannot, like, this is how it actually is in my room right now. And it makes it so dark when I go back here. It's crazy. So, tonight, um, we, oh yeah, I just jumped about, uh, 18 people just came on, and there's another one, so, uh, there's another one, so, oh, there's another one, <laughs> sorry, just bouncing up, okay, so we're gonna give it a couple of minutes to let people log on, because I think that, um, since it's summertime, it's more, I don't know, I don't even know why I'm saying that, never mind, it has some glue in my hand, let me throw it, so, we, today we're making this adorable little Yuki book. I love this. Isn't this gorge? And it's like so. I'm gonna when I turn the camera down, it'll be way better for you guys to see. But it looks like this, and this isn't really the best part. I like the inside the best. Okay, so the inside looks like this. Oh my gosh, it's so dark in here. Okay, there. Can you see that? I made a little sample page just to sort of so show you what you can do with this. Um, this book here, and it basically has a mix-match collage of just random-sized pages, and we actually hand-sew it into the book, which is really, really neat, and it's super, super duper simple, so, um, when I show you the tour, when I show you the tutorial, I'll show you how, and there's like a little bow on the edge of it over there, and it's just really, really fun, and you could create these, these would be really great, um, little... Um, probably not party favors, but if you wanted to include one in, like, a gift to somebody, uh, it would be just great to include, I, I want to say stocking stuffer, but it's not even close to Christmas, so I don't even know why I'm going to say that. Um, give it as, like, a birthday stocking stuffer, like, get someone a stocking and put birthday stuff in it. So, that's a pretty good idea. And then, um, I wanted to talk about some stuff. The first thing was, is that this would be a great project for kids. This is like, um, even if they don't want to put pictures in here, you could totally make this into like a coloring book or um, something that they could color in or that they could um, put their summer memories in. They could put little things like if you go on a trip, you could they could bring one of these and just stick stuff in it like plane tickets and all that different stuff. Just whatever you want. Hi, Lamore. Hi. And, um... Just whatever you want. It's a great project for kids as well. So, um, not it's not just for adults. And this line is perfect for kids. It has a really nice, like, bright color palette that has some pretty, um, pretty nice patterns in it. I love this collection so much. And so, I wanted to talk about that. And I also have a couple other things I wanted to announce. The first being that I am, whoa. Oh, I thought someone was outside. Never mind. Um, the first being that... Oh, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, that the Prima Facebook page, if you go and like Prima on Facebook, they now have... I, I saw this in the blog the other day. They now have downloadable chipboard pieces if you like their Facebook page. And it's not... I think it's like a download that you could download and you print it and you could, like, cut the pieces out. So it's, like, basically a free digital... Um, collage sheet that you could use and all you have to do is like the Facebook page and if um, if people like this then they are going they're gonna keep releasing more and more free collage pages for you to use oh my gosh my sewing machines on oops I thought I forgot I left it on 
And so, um, I want to talk about that, and also, I will be at CHA, um, you guys, I'm going to CHA in Chicago, I went last year, and it was so much fun, except for our nasty hotel room, I wish we stayed where Carrie stayed, because our hotel room was so gross, it had, like, broken pipes, and it smelled like rotting spaghetti, it was so disgusting, and, um, and we went to Carrie's hotel, and Carrie's Hotel is so nice. They had, like, these awesome... I don't know if that was, um... I don't remember if that was Carrie's Hotel. Maybe that was What's-His-Name's Hotel. Um, uh, I forget. I'm blanking. You guys all know I don't know names. Mustache, mustache, mustache. Ken Oliver. I think his hotel room, and I think Carrie stayed there also. Yeah, it was Carrie's Hotel. It was the intercontinent, uh, intercontinental. It was so nice. Like, it was, ew, ours was gross. Um, okay, let's get past the point that I stayed at, like, this disgusting motel. But this time, I am going to be staying with my friend Cindy, which is awesome, because she goes to all the CHA events as well. And, um, I've known her for about two years now, so I'm actually going to stay at her house, which is going to be tons of fun. It's going to be way better than that like, way better than that hotel, and so I ha am having the pleasure of teaching a make-and-take at the Prima booth, um, Carrie asked me if I would be willing to teach a make-and-take, and I was like, yay, yay, I will totally make, a do a make-and-take for, um, the Prima booth, so, um, that stuff's getting shipped to me, and also, in the month of July, all of us Live with Prima instructors are actually going to be showing you the brand new product releases and creating a project with the product. So, like, each person is getting, um, a line to work with, and with that line, um, I'm going to show you the line, and then I'm going to create a project with it, which is going to be so much fun, and, whoa! Who logged on as Prima Flowers and wrote, Hi, peeps. Oh my gosh, do you guys see that? Is that me? I didn't write that. I did not write that at all. Who? Oh, it's Jamie. Wait, Jamie, is that you, or is this my mom? Oh, wait, no, my mom's a hockey. What? <laughs> Who is that? Was, that freaked me out for a minute. I thought there was, like, a ghost on here. Oh, Jamie was logged in as Prima Flower. <laughs> Never mind, Jamie. Okay, so I'm going to point the camera down, you guys, because that's, like, all I wanted to talk about. I think that's all I wanted to talk about. Yeah, so I'm going to point it down. And I'll show you the product on my table. And I'm not sure if I should keep it on this gorge blue side. And let me get it situated. I don't know if I want to keep it on this gorge blue side or if I'm going to flip it over the black. Because the black may show the product a little better. Is this blue? Is this blue good enough? Or should I... Because the black... Here, I just have this sample. Or should I put it on the black one? Do you guys have black one? Do you like the black one more? Okay, I'll switch it. Look at these Prima craft mats are awesome. Watch this. I just pull it out from underneath and flip it over and voila! I have a black one now. There. That's probably better. I didn't even realize that. Okay. So, um, this is a project. Again, see how much better it shows up down here? So this is a project we're going to be making. It's using the Yuki collection from Prima. This is one of their um, past releases. And it has all this just mix match of fun little um, pages in here. And there's just fun little journaling spots and um, border punched pages. And I even took a little cupcake punch and punched out there. And just tons of fun little things in this book. And I just think it's so fun. And we are just going to be creating this gorgeous little book. And just to give you a sampling, I made this page super quick. And it just features a photo. And I added a little bit of washi tape and some staples. And I added some sewing around the outside of the photo. And I just sewed directly over the top of that chipboard pieces and this um, title. Because it's just going to keep it stuck on there a little bit more. And I added a super tiny little bit of journaling. 
And then the back side, because I added the sewing, it created a perfect frame for me to add even more journaling and some um, little embellishments on there. So you can go ahead and have fun and just create so much stuff with this. Okay, let me read these. Let me read the comments. Do you like my brass knuckles? <laughs> They're not brass knuckles. I'm just kidding. Wait, something says censored. Wait, what am I doing? Am I offline? Wait, something says, is that you, Drew? What's in... We can see you... Okay, good. I thought I went offline or something, because we were like, if that's my picture... Oh, no! This is not my picture. This is my brother. See? He's all blonde. I'm not blonde. I'm like... Red, see? I'm kind of red. I dyed my hair. Can you tell? It's lighter up here and darker in the back. You can't even really tell. It was sort of um, like a, a pointless waste of $13. But anyways. Okay, so we're going to be using the Yuki Collection by Ruby Violet. And let me open up my Yuki Collection here. And look at Prima's Craft Tools max, match the opposite side of your mat. That's what I love. I love this blue color. It's really pretty. So I'm going to show you some of the papers in here just because I want you to get a little a feel for like the line. Here are some cute little flowers. And these are some sort of flowers on a, a black background, which I think is really fun because um, black isn't used that much in pattern paper as like a, a main color. And these are some more cute flowers. Aren't these awesome? And then you have some gingham pattern, like a teal. And then there's this pattern here, which is like a really pretty red with a yellow polka dot. And here is a purple pattern here, purple polka dot. And then this is a really cute floral. I love this. I want to get this in like a fabric print and make something from it. Okay, this is just a, a, a like a grid pattern. And some bunnies and flowers. And this one's some little apples. And some little sort of tiny little ferns. You probably can't see them, but they're really, really, there's some like miniature ferns. And here's some of the framed images and the yellow with red polka dots, some clouds, and some alien kittens. Alien kittens. I love the word kittens. And some wood grain. Wood grain. So I'm actually not going to use this pad. I'm going to use the remainder of my um, other pad I started. See how this pad's just a little bit thinner than this one? I, I have already used this one. I want to keep this one and just use up the other patterns in here, which is a lot of other patterns. And we're also going to be using the, um, the Yuki journaling cards, which are also really adorable. Let me just show you a peek into the journaling cards as well. Have I gone a long time? How much time am I at? Where is the recording? Okay, 13 minutes. Okay. Um, these are really cute. Look at how these are so fun. They're little die cut journaling cards. And they have little um, like hand drawn images on them. And look at this one. Okay, who loves this collection? Because I seriously, I absolutely love it. I think it is so much fun. And here are here's another image, and I love this little girl. I just love her orange hair. And here is a solid one without an image, a girl on it. Love the black border. And here's another oval-shaped one with, um, look at how cute these clouds are. I love the cloud. I just love all the images in here. They're just so fun and sort of modern, and the color palette's just really, really nice. Um, and then here is the last image. Okay, so, and they come in this really nice little package, which I also like. I like how compact it is. And we're also going to be using some bling. Look at these little blings from the um, Ruby Violet Yuki collection. Really adorable. Look at this little, like, dash hound. I think that's how, what they're called. Aren't they called, like, dash hounds or dash huns or something? I don't know how to pronounce it. 
and we're going to use the alphabet, which this is like the perfect, all of these alphabets that go with the collection. Oh, and I never answered your gangster question. Uh, no, I'm not gangster. Can you see these pyramid spikes? They're not actually like, it's not like, um, brass knuckles or anything. I got it from Urban Outfitters on sale, and I really like it. I don't know why. It's just like fun to wear, and it's heavy. Like if I wanted to punch someone, you'd have pyramid imprints in your face, but I'm not going to. Okay, you guys, so these are, like, this is, like, the perfect alphabet to use on any of your, like, books that you do, um, like, mini books or, uh, layouts or anything. It has, like, five different alphabets. I said like, like, seven times, and I just said it again. So it has all these different alphabets. This is sort of a type typographic alphabet, and this one's sort of fun. It has all these different sort of doodle letters, so we're going to be using that. And lastly, we are going to be using the chipboard pieces. Um, which are so fun. You get 36 pieces, and let me just show you some of them, and then we'll get to the project. Oh, look at all these little chipboards. Like, look at this. This is like a tiny little apple. Okay. Doesn't everyone just love chipboard? I love... I, I have to buy the die-cut chipboard with the collection pack. Oh my gosh, an alien kitty! And here's this little dash hound friend. And I know there's another dash hound in here somewhere. Here's the other little dash hound. They're all friends. And a little frame. And then here's some of the girl images. Oh my gosh! Oh, this one. Look, it has a little squirrel on it. I want a paper with squirrels on it, Carrie. Can you arrange this, the squirrel paper? And then some um, other girl images. And then some really cute just little animals. And... These are just, like, adorable. I absolutely love these pieces. And then there's all these little miniature pieces. And these are so fun. Also, look, there's little cloud images and hearts and flowers and a little birdie and, um, yeah, and apples. So the chipboard pieces are also really, really fun. So I'm going to move those over here. They're going through a, a small little crack between my tripod and my computer. And we can get to the project. So what I like to start off by doing is I just pull some patterns, and I've already pulled some patterns from the collection, just some random um, patterns here that I wanted to choose. And I'm actually going to grab some a couple more that I do not have in here because I want a variety to work with. So I'm just going to grab these patterns. And look at how fun these are. And I actually don't think I'm going to be working with the framed pattern just because it's too... Uh, um, I don't know what that word's called. It's not too bold, but it just has, it has, like, a theme to it of girl, and I just kind of want to keep it just sort of a plain pattern without any theme going on. And the way that you're going to create this little book is you are going to take patterns, um, because these are not double-sided. If you had the 12 by 12 paper, you could totally, totally take um, the paper and just cut it, and you'll, it'll already be double-sided for you, which is great. But since this is a 6 by 6 paper pad, we are going to have to adhere the papers together, and then you're going to have your own um, double-sided paper. Oh my gosh. Oh, I saw nothing against Drew. I thought I was, like, doing something wrong. And I'm going to take my uh, glue, and I'm just using my Fabri-Tac, because I love Fabri-Tac. And I am just going to adhere these papers together. And I, I don't like... Um, I like to adhere the full paper together and then cut it. If you want to cut it and save on glue, you can. I just like to do this and then cut them all at the end, so... Uh, I'm just going to adhere them. And then, you see, you're going to have a double-sided paper. And it goes really, really quick once you get, like, um, used to it. And you could also leave some of them single-sided if you want to have a white background, which is also, I'll leave some of them um, single-sided as well. So we will have a white background that you, if you were, um, if your child wanted to use it, they could color on that white background, or it could just be a spot for you to add some journaling on a white background rather than a pattern background or something. Okay, and I think I'm getting high off of this Fabri-Tac. It has a really strong, like, potent smell, and it didn't get in my nose. It, like, the scent got in my mouth, and it, it's like, I don't know, weird. Okay, and I'm going to uh, adhere a couple more of these.
I love this. It's like a really like cute little polka dot. And then a gingham pattern. So we have three double-sided patterned papers, and then they're extra thick, which is also nice. Gives you a nice sturdy page. But I want to keep some of them to just solid sides, so I want to make this floral just a solid. So I'm going to add it to my stack of doubles, and I also want to make this cloud pattern a solid. So I want to put it in this stack of doubles, and I'm going to go ahead and adhere the last of these um, papers together. And I might need more. Um, I don't. I didn't really count. It's all how, however much you want to add is how much you add. There is no set amount of how many paper pages you have to have on the inside of your album. It's all totally up to you. My screen went black. Don't you love this pattern? You can't even see it. It's like these little starburst flowers. Let's call them that, okay? Does anyone have any questions that I can answer for you? Oh, well, this one here. Is Ustream acting up, Carrie? Like it always, always does? Let's hope Ustream doesn't see that. They will ban me from Ustream. Okay, so I'm just going to adhere these papers, papers together. I know it probably is better to use this glue in a ventilated area, Joe, but um, I am not in a ventilated area at the moment. Actually, my window's open, so it's kind of ventilated, right? I want to use this graph just because it's so subtle, and this graph print will make a perfect journaling page. And... I think I'll, I, I don't want to leave that one double-sided. I want that one a little sturdier for journaling. So let's add this adorable little um, red with the flowers and the little bunnies on it. Oh, they're little bunny rabbits. Let me just make sure I didn't already do that one. Nope, I didn't. I don't even know, what is that social stream tab for anyways? I don't even know what that is. I've never even clicked on it. I only use the videos in the chat tab. Yeah, I've never had an issue, if you guys are curious about Fabri-Tac as well. It just, um... It smells, but it kind of smells good. It's like, you know how a Sharpie smells good? Well, well to some people, it smells good. Um, it smells kind of like a Sharpie, but like a lot stronger than a Sharpie. Okay, so I have these pages, and this is like a really thick array of pages. And as you can see, some of them are single-sided, and some of them are double-sided. And let me just flip them over to show you. See how these two right here are single-sided papers? And I want some single-sided papers. And so I'm actually going to keep um, some of these at their actual size. Um, let, me, let me make sure that I did that. Yeah, I did. Okay, just making sure. I'm actually going to keep some of these at their actual size of 6x6. Six six. Let's just keep two of them. One of them being a solid pattern and then one of them being a double-sided pattern. And then with some of them, I want to cut them down just a tad bit. Oh my gosh, you guys, look, I got a new trimmer. Can you see this? I got a new trimmer. Crazy, huh? So I'm going to cut this one to like four and a quarter. I just want a different size. And you're not going to need this little piece, but you will need this one. So that's going to be a odd page. And I want to cut this one just a little bit. I'm just cutting them like really completely randomly. This is just like a little wood grain pattern, and actually it's going to need to fold that way. So I'm going to want to cut it this way. I'm going to cut a little bit more off of this. Okay. And on this one, let's just cut it completely in half, and then when we sew it in, it'll be like one of those double flip pages so it'll be in here like this but it will have two flips one here and one here so we have those two 
And do I want to keep more full pages? Nah. I like the smaller, sort of fun pages. So I'm going to cut just a small little bit off of this. And lastly, I have this page here, which I think I want to leave as a full page because it actually has a really nice um, ledger on it. Let me see what I did in this book. I kept some of them full, some of them smaller. Yeah, so some of them will be a little bit thinner as well. So let's go ahead and just make this one one of the thinner ones where we're going to cut it in both directions to sort of make a thinner box. So those are all of the papers. Actually, I forgot one. So we'll cut this one into like another boxy one. And you do not have to measure at all these pages. You're not going to be able to tell the measurements once we fold them and add them to our book. So I also want to add a couple of pieces of just craft cardstock. These are just perfect for adding on some journaling or whatever you want to do. Hey, look, the chat is moving. So um, these are these are just literally scrap leftovers from um, a four by six. I made this little four by six journal the other day for my blog, and it's like a little washi tape journal that I um, constructed with just washi tape strips, and it's just like it's adorable. So. Um, I have these little leftover pages, and I'm going to keep some of them at 4 by 6 I'm going to keep, like, one of them at 4 by 6 and I want to make one of them, like, thinner than 4 by 6 and then we're going to make one of them just, like, we'll keep two of them at 4 by 6 And we also want some journaling spots. So basically, you're just going to have this stack of pages. So we have this stack of pages that we're creating. And I want to add some journaling spots. Do I make sense so far? Can anybody, did everyone follow along? Or am I like totally blabbering and nobody? Okay, good. And I'm going to take a couple of these. Let's say I want this one here because she has pink hair and that's awesomely cool. So I want to add that one, and I totally love this one because it has um, it on both sides. So when we actually go to fold our piece over, you're going to have the image on both sides, which is pr quite nice because they're going to be in different sections of your book, and you'll see what I mean. And I don't want a ton of these journaling cards, but I do want, I want another square one. Okay, which one should I use, you guys, between this one and this one? Should I use the blonde-haired girl or the brown-haired girl? brunette. This red one or this blue one? Here's the blue one. And here is the red one. Okay, we have two blues and three reds. I think we're going to go with the red just because it'll add a pop of red to our album. Look at how many. You guys, do you see how like little of product we used to make one? This is all you're going to need for the insides of your album. You are going to have tons of leftover paper and tons of leftover journaling cards, and you can just add your own cardstock. You could probably, if you were to buy all the products I showed at the beginning, you will probably be able to make four to five, maybe even more, of these little day books out of it. And um, then we are going to start folding and the way I fold mine is I use my Martha Stewart scoreboard just because it's much easier for me to do and I literally just lay down my um, piece and I score it randomly I want to score this one perfectly at three inches so I'm gonna score it at three inches and you're just gonna score everything so let's say I want this one scored more this one you could just lay down randomly. I want this one scored more on the side of the clouds. So can you see how my score line is more on this side? I didn't center it on this one, as I did on um, this one is centered, and then this one isn't. And you're just going to score them in all different spots. And I want this one scored oh, probably in the middle, maybe a little bit less. But you're going to keep in mind that where you score them is going to be where they are in your book. So this is going to be in your book, and there's going to be more pages sitting on top. So there might be these two together, and we're going to be creating our book like this, and just keep on stacking them, and then we're going to sew them into a binding. And yes, you guys, it is recorded, in case you are curious. And 
I'm going to make this one a small one. So I just scored like you're going to have a little journaling spot on this side and a larger one on that side. And I want this one a half and half. So I'm going to do this one at three. And let's do this one at three as well. Actually, I'm going to do it at three and a half. So there's a little less. Um, it's not as... Um, you know what I'm trying to say. And then I'm going to score this one. This one's a pretty small one. Let's just score this one at three. You know, it doesn't give it too much room. Like, you don't have too much room, but you could totally add, like, a little title. You could use it as a little divider for your next sections if you wanted to. And I'm going to do this one. This. Just make sure that you could fold it in either direction. And your paper may crack, and that's because you scored a little bit too hard. But the cracked paper is not going to show because it's going to be most likely in this position, which you can't see the cracked paper. And it's going to be sewn into a binding anyways, so it's not going to crack. It's not going to crack on. It's not. You're not going to be able to see the cracking when the sewing's over the top of the cracks. So I'm going to do this one at four, and you could even flip it over and score both sides in both directions, which will. Um, give you a little bit less of the cracking. And so I did that one in that direction. And I want to do both of these. And I'm actually going to just score both of these down the middle at three. So I'm just laying them both down. These ones are actually split. Remember, we split these ones. So they will be in different positions in our album. And let's do this one. This one could just be a three by three. This one's perfectly scored. And then you're just going to fold in both directions because they will be able to fold in both directions in our book. This is <coughs> oh my gosh, I just almost coughed, but I didn't. Oh my gosh, you guys. Oh, okay, I thought Jamie. I thought I thought Jamie was Carrie, and I thought Carrie was like, "We're quitting you stream." Sorry, Carrie, that's not what you sound like. And I thought it went by um, her saying, okay, girls, I'm calling it quits, <laughs> was like, oh, I'm quitting you stream. Good night, Jamie. Okay, and I'm going to score this one at three. So you're going to have a perfect, like half page. And if you don't like the measurements when they get in your book, you could totally cut them down and do whatever you want to them. I don't have that many smaller size pages. Oh, yeah, I do. Okay. And there we go. There's our last page. So now you're going to have... I'm going to move this out of the way. You are going to have all of these scored and pre-done pages. So see, these are all scored and done for you. Okay, you guys, so now it's time to construct our book. So basically, the, the page that you're going to have in your very back of your book, all the pages are going to be inserted on top of this and then sewn down the spine in different spots. So everything you add on top of this, let's say I wanted to add this here, is these are going to be create pages on both sides. So this is going to be on the left side of your book, and then there's going to be a seam, and then these pages are going to be on the right side of your book. Does that make sense? So all the pages that I'm adding to this center section here are going to be on the inside of your book. And keep in mind, I already tried. These journaling cards don't match up if you want to double-side them. They, the scallop edges don't match up. So um, it, it gives you still a nice white spot to add journaling or paint to or whatever you want to do. But it's also nice to add your journaling spots in opposite ways as well. So I'm going to take this one, which is just a smaller-sized page and stick it in there and see all of our different mixed match pages. Now let's say, oh, I don't like this how this looks. It's all cut here. It's sort of wonky cut. You could take out these pages and let's go ahead and add in one of the opposite larger pages. And let's actually go in with a craft page. So I want to have a long craft page. So this one here will work perfect as a long craft page. So that'll just fill in that gap at the top and still give you that variety of size. And then you're just going to start stacking all your pages in there. So see all the variety and size you have there. 
and I'm going to stick these two in next. So these are actually a pretty neat one. So they're going to stay perfectly center. So it's going to look like a full page, but it's actually going to be two flaps. And this is what I was talking about. So see, when you flip through your book, you're going to have one flap here and one flap here. So see how fun that is? And you could even reverse them if you want to, but I'm going to keep them the same just because it will give you that impression as, oh, this is all one flap. And then you flip, um, you're going to flip part of it and it's only going to be flipping half. And these might be hard to fold and you're not going to need to really fold them. You're just going to want to make sure that they all are stacking up on the same point. So stack them up and you could even start adding some more stuff to the outside if you wanted to. So I want a little journaling card or to greet me. So I'm going to put this journaling card in the opposite way, just right in here. And see, now you're going to have, like, right when you open your book, you could see, oh, there's this little journaling card which you could write about what's in your book. So if you want to add a journaling card at the beginning to write about what's in your book, you totally can add one there. And I want to open up my album because I want a couple more things in between these pages, including some more craft paper. And we'll make these more fun because it seems like, oh, so basically all you have in here is craft and um, is, like, craft patterns and some journaling cards. But we are going to add some die cut edges, which is really going to give you a fun look. The die cut edges really like completely mix up your pages. Yeah, there's no rules at all. Um, exactly what Carrie just said. You just place stuff wherever you want and see like I'm going to put this one in the opposite direction this way. That way, actually, I don't, I'm not going to put it in this way because then we'll have the things going in the, like if I put it in that way, see how these sides basically match up? They're like the same exact size. I want to put it in the opposite way. That way I have a mix of sizes right in that center section. So now it's all mixed up. And I want to add just this little flap here. And then in the very middle of your album, let me check mine. The middle of my album, I made sure to keep a journaling card in the middle. But you could do whatever you want in the middle. If you don't want to add a journaling card, you totally can't. But I think I'm going to. And you guys, I'm going to add the blonde girl. Because I know, I know all of you wanted me to add her so much. So I'm going to add the blonde girl. And I'm not going to get my scoreboard out to score this one. And you really don't need a scoreboard if you don't want one. Um, for the journaling cards, at least. You probably, you probably would need one for the other pieces. So I want this to be the middle of my book, and look at how look at how cute all these little pages are. Oh yeah, Carrie, great! This is also a great way to use up scraps. That's a great idea. Oh yeah, um, good idea, Babu. You could also score using your trimmer if you don't have a scoreboard. Um, and if you don't even have a trimming blade, you could just lay it in your scoreboard and then score it as long as it's one of those scoreboards that don't have the, um, that, it's not a rotary one. It's like the one with the slider blade type thing. Well, I guess that's still sort of rotary style. And then you're going to open up all your pages and just make sure that they are stuck. So you're going to hold this pretty flat and you could hold it on one side and just flip through and see, oh, I like the way this looks. This looks good. So let's just flip through, see all these different pages you have in there, and you're going to have just twice as many because it's folded over. So I want to have this. This is exactly what I want my book to look like. I'm going to hold this down into place, and a little tip is I'm going to grab one of these. These are just little uh, binder clips, and you could just binder clip it right at the top here right at the top of both sides, you could go ahead and add binder clips because we're not going to be sewing at the very top. It's going to be about an inch down, so anything down will work. And then all your pages are going to stay intact and um, very easy to manage for you. As you can see, I didn't use all of the pages I actually pulled, but that's fine. And we are going to now be taking our um, We Are Memory Keepers or whatever hole punch you have. You need probably an industrial hole punch, but uh, it doesn't, you could punch them individually, but I would suggest an industrial style hole punch. And I'm going to go ahead and punch four holes and pretty evenly spaced. So I'm gonna punch one up here at the top 
and just punch it right down your seam. So see how the, there's a seam here? This is centered in your seam. You're going to want it centered. And you're going to go to the opposite side. And I would suggest taking the binder clip off of this side so you could definitely gauge how far you want to add this hole. So it's about three quarters of an inch down. So I'm going to go in here and punch it at about three quarters of an inch down. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you could measure. I'm not going to just because I don't want to. But see how these are pretty, pretty much the same. There's one hole up there and then there's one hole. It's right there at the bottom. And I'm going to go up a little bit and punch my second hole right about here. That one had definitely more stuff in it. And then I am going to punch my last hole, which is the fourth hole. Right about here. Oopsies, I totally forgot to add my little outsider, my little uh, wrapping. But we could add that. There's no problem. And I'm going to punch my last hole. So then you are definitely going to want to binder clip this. Well, if you did what I did, you're going to want to binder clip this but I accidentally forgot to add my outside cover, the craft, like the whole covering, this sort of craft binding outside piece. So we're going to add that now. And uh, you're going to need some craft cardstock, and you can use whatever craft cardstock you like. Mine's pretty warped, but that's perfectly fine. I don't even care. And I'm going to cut it down. I don't know what size I needed. I know I needed a little bit more than six um, in width, so I'm going to go a little bit more than six, probably six and a half, so I have a quarter inch on the top and the bottom, because our, we did use a six by six paper pad, so we know the actual length of our, or the height of our book is going to be exactly six. So we're going to want to cut this at about six and a half, giving a quarter inch on either side. And then the maximum point that pops out, you're going to measure from the seam to your maximum point. And that is about four. So you're going to want to cut it to probably eight and a half and a little tiny bit more just because the seam is going to do sort of warp it and it's going to do it's going to do some odd things. So it, it might push it over a tiny bit. So do eight and a half and just a little tiny bit more. And you could shave the excess off. All of the excess on the outside, you could trim that down if you'd like after, you're, after you have it all in. And let's go ahead and score this centered. So this is eight. I, I did this at eight and three quarters. So I'm going to want to score this at four and a little bit more than a, a quarter, like at three eighths. And I don't know where my thing is. Okay. So four and a little bit more than a quarter, but not exactly a half because that would make that nine. So I'm going to go between a quarter and the half mark, which is the three eighth mark. So four and three eighths you're going to score this at. And again, this is cut to eight and three quarters by six and a half. And you're going to score it down the middle at four and three eighths and fold it over. And then you're going to have a perfectly centered outside cover. Gorge, huh? Are you following along, guys? Is it, Am I making sense still? Okay, and then this side actually, see how this side, this craft, is actually different than this craft? This one's a lot lighter, and then this one's a lot darker. I like the dark side personally on the outside of my book, just because I like the way the dark looks. And I'm just going to score it, and I'm going to open it. And this, it, this would be your final layer on the outside. When you go to punch, you would have actually stuck this in there and then punched. But I kind of forgot, so... I didn't really do that, so I'm going to actually have to take off my binder clips off either side and then get it pretty much centered down the seam and take my uh, pencil and just go ahead and mark that very bottom hole. And I'm just going to make sure it gets all the way down to the craft cardstock because I don't think it is. Actually, I could probably just take all of these off and just use the very bottom one. Oh, well, actually, the very bottom one only has a specific... It only has three of the holes, so I know that those three need to be there. Just be really careful when you pick it up so you don't get um, that much off. 
and then you can just lay it back down. Let me make sure that that went to the bottom. And yes, it did. So then I'm going to pull these off and just realign our holes. So these are pretty much, al pretty much aligned. And if you need to, you could take your craft pick and stick it through the hole and just align them and make sure it will come out the opposite end and then just sort of twist it around a couple times and it will really align all your holes. All my holes are completely aligned now. I don't know, can you see through them? And then I'm going to just clip it to hold it and I'm going to punch the holes on this. Where'd my hole punch go? Here it is. Isn't this such a fun idea, you guys? Little mini journals. Okay, and I'm just going to punch the holes on this. So as you can see, I did a pretty good, uh, pretty good job just eyeballing the four holes. But if you want to measure, you totally can. And I'm going to stick this down in there, and this is when the sewing comes in. So you're going to need a needle. So I just have like a large eyed needle. And the thread I use is this thread. I got it at the thrift store. This whole roll was five cents. And um, yeah, it's just like cotton, cotton thread. And this is the first ever crafting supply I ever bought. When I first started scrapbooking, I went to the thrift store to see if there was any scrapbook stuff before I ever went to Michael's or anything. And I found that string, and that's the first thing I ever, ever bought, like, scrapbooking related. Or that I was intentionally going to use for scrapbooking. Yeah, crochet cotton, I guess, Deb. And so I cut off a good amount, that way I could use it for um, my binding. And what I do is I am going to, I'm going to leave the binder clip on just to make it a little bit easier, but I sew up through the, the first hole. Oh, and one of my pages fell out, that's sort of the bad Thing, and this is actually one of the pages that I need set in place. So I have to find it. It's sort of tricky to completely sew it in. Or get, get it all set like perfectly. But once you have them all. I should have bind, binder clipped the bottom. But I was too lazy and just decided not to. So I'm going to set that off to the side. And I'm going to go through my first hole. See how I just popped out of the first hole. And then I'm going to go through the first hole of my actual, uh, like my pages. So I'm just going to go up through the first hole, like this, pull it through. And then I'm going to go down through this hole and down through my uh, backer sheet hole as well. And I'm just going to do that before I um, like do anything with this extra cording on the back. We're going to have this extra cording. You're going to leave that, um, leave a, a good enough tail because we're going to tie it into a bow. And then you're going to just continue sewing down. Like, it's so easy. You're just going to sew. So I'm gonna, now it's going up through my third hole. You just sew back and forth, sort of. And I just pulled my tail a lot. So if you need to put it back in place. And I'm going to sew again. And then I'm going to go. See, I got to the end now. So this is what I'm going to have, is I'm going to have one stitch and then threads coming out of both ends. And I'm going to go back down the middle. And I'm going to flip it over and go through the next hole. And through this hole. I was thinking about doing Baker's Twine, but I think it would just be a little bit too thick um, for this. But then again, the Baker's Twine I have is like some off-brand thick stuff. So I might just like be thinking that because that's the Baker's Twine I have. And you're going to do this just really until you can't do it anymore. Or not, you're going to want to do it until it's sturdy. So I like to go about two to three times to full, um, full, like, full things. So I'll show you what this looks like. See on the inside? This is what it's going to look like. You're going to have the thread in the center of your book. And you're going to go on the outside. And I'm going to stick it through this hole here. So it's really, really clean. And you're going to see I just have two threads going through those two holes. There's only one through this hole because I'm going to be coming back up through this hole here. And going back down through this hole here. And then we're going to end it 
by, um, because now our threads are going to be coming through different directions. See how they're coming through different directions? All I'm going to do is go through the two threads at the top and create a knot at the very top, just like this. And I'm going to do it twice. Pull it through and just create. This is called a, a half hitch knot. And I'm going to stick it back out the front so it goes out the front of our book just like that and that will hold it in place so it's not going to pull back through even though we just came through it and then you can now take your pieces off and you could tie it in a knot or tie it in a bow so I'm going to tie it in a knot first or just like something taut to hold your two strands in place and then just tie it into a cute little bow on the edge we go and you can just trim off your little tails and there you go you guys we have our book and you're starting to fold it you may it's gonna be really really hard to keep fold this out it just wants to flap open if you just set it under some heavy books for about a day it'll totally flatten out for you okay what are we talking about I need to know what we're talking about but look at this, you guys. So you're going to flip your book open, and you can see there's a nice journaling spot at the beginning. And you're going to have this sort of smaller page. And there's going to be this flip page, and this fun page, and this page, and this small page. And then these are the two little flap pages that I was talking about. See how they're just little flappy pages? And then this page, and then this page, and then this one. And see how fast we did that? And look how much, like, how many pages you're going to get out of this album. So many. Really, really fun. Large page in the back and a little journaling spot with the blonde or the pink haired lady. Okay, so um, we are almost done with the class. I'm actually going to show you how to do some embellishing on the front cover. But before I do that, I actually want to show you how to make a quick closure. So, what you're going to need to make your closure are some grommets and so I'm going to use these grommets here these are the extra large eyelets actually they're eyelets not grommets these are the extra large eyelets by we are memory keepers these are not being made anymore which kind of it's, I'm sad about that but um, you could probably find them online and I'm also going to use some Tim Holtz hitch fasteners so you need those two products to create a really nice binding and what we're going to do is you're going to lay it down on your grid mat, or I'm going to, just so I could see how, like, my exact width, so I could see it's six and a half inches wide. You probably can't see that, but I'm going to want to mark a little hole or something at about three and a quarter. So I know three and a quarter is right about here, so I'm going to go down right about here, and I'm just going to poke a hole just in the very top. You're not even going to be able to see it, but when you poke a hole in the top, you're going to flip it over and do the same thing to the opposite side. This is going to give you a guide of where we are going to add our little pieces okay and you're gonna punch a hole on both of those sides and on the front of your album the very front of your album you're gonna want to punch your hole at the smaller size which is the 1 8 size it's the smaller size on the thing And then, so I punched my hole, centered, one-eighth hole on the front, and then I'm going to center a three-sixteenth hole on the back. So I'm going to flip it over so I can see it a little bit better. There we go. So now I have a centered three-sixteenth hole. And now we are going to want to insert our metal findings. So I have, these are the hitch fasteners. I'm going to use the silver one because it goes with my grommet color and it actually goes like perfectly. The silvers go perfectly together. So I'm going to use the one hitch fastener and I'm going to use one extra large eyelet. So see you guys, we have one of our extra large eyelets here and then we have our hitch fastener. So they're like perfectly matching components. And with your hitch fastener, you're going to go to the front of your book and stick the little, um, looks like a nail, it has like a nail backing on it. You're going to stick that up so the post is coming out of the front of your book. Can you see how it 
it's like a post sticking out, and you're going to screw this little doorknob type thing on it. And you're just going to screw it on. And I may actually need to like use a screwdriver because I think mine's a little bit, like the threads are not aligning. One second, you guys. Mm, you get the idea. It just basically, it slips on, you just do it on there, but I need to use a screwdriver because they're not align aligning that well. And then on the back side, you are going to slip your grommet in. See how this is the outside of this one? This is the outside of this one. You're going to put your grommet in this side and set it to the grommet function and punch it down. And there you go. You're going to have your little grommet set on that side. And then you just have to simply take some baker's twine or a little bit something thicker than that cotton's twine. And one second, you guys, I'm just looking for something. I'm looking for my baker's twine, but I don't know. I do not know where I put it. Where are you, baker's twine? Found you. So this is a baker's twine. You can just cut off a nice long piece of baker's twine, and you're just going to fold it over. You're going to have the loop at this end. And you're just going to stick the loop through the eyelet. And you don't have to use an eyelet if you don't have one. But it's going to reinforce your hole and make sure that your thread doesn't rub and then rip. So you're going to have it like this. On the outside, there's going to be this. And then on the opposite side, there's going to be this post, which you could simply wrap your thread around and tie a bow on. Like that was so simple. Such a simple little binding. And then you can just cut your threads um, a little bit longer so that it's easy to retie. And there you go. You have a little binding for your book. Gorge, huh? Very nice. Did that make sense? Okay. Um, we're going to do a little tiny bit of embellishing to the front cover, and then we're going to call it good because um, we're at an hour now. So all those little excess cutoff scraps... I think I'm going to use like this on the cover. So I'm literally just going to like slap things down. Actually, I want to use the floral. I love the floral. So I'm going to use the floral. And just make sure to add a good amount of glue on it. And I should probably work with it closed. That way it's a little bit flatter because right now it's sort of bulking up because I haven't set it under a book. Okay, so I'm going to work when it, well, it's flat. So this is our, our covers on this side with a little hitch coming up. So I'm going to add my small little, and I'm going to move the bow over, small little piece of patterned paper on this side here. I, use, I do use tape adhesive like I use um, my ATG gun, but at the moment I just have the Fabri-Tac, so I'm, I just want to use the Fabri-Tac, and it will probably stick it a lot better. Okay, and I want to add a tiny little bit of washi tape, even though I didn't mention that. I'm just going to add the black polka dot washi tape. I just feel like it will be add a nice little contrast. And it will give you a different texture, a tape texture. And I'm going to rip it. There you go. So I'm going to have a little bit of a black contrast polka dot. And um, then I want to add a chipboard piece so we can go into our chipboards and see what chipboard piece. I want to use a different one than last time. So maybe ha this one says happy and lucky on it. That might be a, a cute one to add on there. Or I could also add this oh happy day. I think I'm going to use a happy and lucky one, but I kind of want to do something to the outside of it. What can we do to the outside? Let's see. One second. I'll be right back, you guys.
Okay, I ran and got my big shot because I really want to add a decorative element to the outside of this. So I have these nestability, nestability dies, and I want to add one of the scallops. Like there's really cute little scallop die. So I'm going to cut one out of both of these, and I'm just going to run up through really super duper fast. And I'm just going to grab a paper from my paper pad. And I want something a bit bright, since the main, that main element is... Do I use this? No, I don't want two polka dots. Oh well, I'll just use this yellow with a red polka dot, even though I just said I don't want two polka dots. So I'm just going to run this through my machine super quick. And we're going to have some scallops. If you don't have a Big Shot machine or this, um, or if you don't have a, if you don't have this die, you could use your like Cricut if you have one of those. So see, I just cut out these scallops and our little circle will fit perfectly on this one. It just adds a little element to the outside that I wanted. Someone texted me. Oopsie. My friend texted me with a bad word. Bad friend. Okay, see, look at how much cuter this e embellishment is now for the front. Isn't it gorge now? Not that it wasn't gorge before, but now it's just, like, even gorger. And I'm going to use some Prima Chalk Ink in the color Raspberry Pi. I've been using this one a lot, like, um, a lot lately. I don't know why. I just really like the color. Just going to make it stand out. A little bit. I don't want to ink it too much, but I just totally over inked it. So I'm going to totally go for it and just ink it all. Oh man, I ruined it. I'm crazy. Okay, I inked it too much. I inked it too much. Hmm. Maybe I'll just use it on this smaller one. Yeah, I don't really want to. I inked it way too much. I find it hard to ink scallop circles. I'm just going to use a smaller one. You're just going to little, a little bit of the scallop hanging out, which is still totally gorge. I'm going to add some adhesive. And you could leave it as simple as something like this that just says happy day. Like, look at how cute this is. Isn't this not, is this not cute? Or you can go a little bit further and add some gemstone bling or, um, some other items to it. What else can we add? What other cutesy things do can we add to this? Maybe if I had like a different color red border or a blue border. Ooh, I think I'm going to cut this journaling card. I'm going to cut down this journal card. And where is my paper trimmer? I'm just gonna, I want a little bit of this journaling card just to sort of pop out. So, I'm going to peel this up. I think I want this to go right about there. Uh, no. That's totally bad. Don't like that at all. Maybe I should just add the title. Okay, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed this class. I think I'm just going to add the title. What should I title this book, you guys? You give me a title, and I will title it. It could be short or long. I know, aren't these things cute? And you could probably make them so much quicker than me, and you could even mass produce them, because you could cut all the pages for, like, five albums at once. And, um... Oh, yeah, I already did name it, didn't I? Oops, happy-go-lucky, it says that. Oopsie. But I want to do something else to it. Maybe I'll just give it a bl uh, I'll give it some black pen. Some doodling. Okay. Okay, so... Just going to add, like, these, like, little border lines. I like doodling. It's fun. Like, I just like adding doodled elements. There we go. Just a little bit of doodling. 
And there we go, you guys. We have our completed little Yuki day book. And you could make these as, as many of these as you'd like. And you could totally just embellish them however you want. As you can see, I have created two different day books. Let me close up this one to show you. And they're so adorable. Carrie, can I show them my August project? Or is it, should I not show them it yet? Okay, look at these. Aren't these gorge? I know, these are so much fun. And the Yuki line is just so fun to make these with. Okay, do you guys want to see my August project? It is totally gorge. Like, oh, I have to show them Carrie's bracelet. My mom wants this bracelet also. I think this bracelet looks like so pretty. This is our August project, and this is a charm bracelet. I'll bring it to CHA Carrie. And look at it. It's like totally covered in Prima uh, genie, genie Stones, and I even took some vines, and we made our own leaf charms, and we hardened them, and we made our own glittered leaf charms. And there are little um, vintage button trinkets from the vintage button line. And we um, make our own vintage button trinkets by backing two of them and making our own charms. And it is just totally fun. And it has this really pretty strip of lace down the center on this gold chain. And the gold chain just makes it pop. Isn't this gorge? And it's so, it was so inexpensive to make. You guys can make this for like $12. But look at, see? It's totally chunky, and isn't this nice? It's their August project, and it has like a little hanging, um, little hanging genie stone in the back, so you can adjust it to your width. And, yes, it's totally fab. Just very fab. It has, like, look at this. This is like a cute little resin flower button. Okay, the winner is N-A-N-C-2-3-2. Nancy? Nancy 2, possibly. Congratulations. So, yes, I love this project. And I just love the little pops of gold glittered leaves in here. It g gives it a great, like, sort of vintage -y vibe. So I'm going to point the camera up now. Can you see me? Do you like my hair? Is it pretty? I'm just kidding. I sound like a little English. Um, someone called me a... What did they call me? A Polish per a Polish boy. I know, right? You can't even tell, Scrapping Corner, that my hair is different at all. Like, it totally washed out. It was a waste of $13. It's kind of like, if I turn the light on it, or if I go outside, it definitely has this ombre effect. Like, it's dark back here, and it gets lighter up here. Oh, the cool glasses are here. These are actually my prescription glasses. They're very nice, right? And they get dark when I go outside, so there's sunglasses also. But I don't like that feature. I wish I wouldn't have got it, because I do have... Um, these ones are Ray-Bans, and I bought these ones like a long time ago. These ones are also Ray-Bans, but these are like actual sunglasses. There are no prescription in them at all. And I like these ones way more because they get way, way darker than these ones. These ones get like gray, which I don't really like. And look at this one is totally awesome because it has a, a New York map print on the inside. Isn't that cool? The inside of the glasses are a New York map. And it has places like... Um, Queensboro and Lexington Avenue and Hunter something and Rockefeller Center. There's all, all these different things. Okay, wait, what? I am wearing an Aussie t shirt. No, I'm not. See? Billabong. Oh, that does sound kind of Australian. Okay, you guys. So I think that's all for tonight. Do you have any more questions before I head off and leave you all alone? I wish I could just talk to you guys for like three more hours because I have nothing to do.
Well, I do. I'm supposed to go in my friend's house, but I'm not going until my mom gets home to take me. So, oh, am I a snowboarder? Uh, I have a snowboard, and I go snowboarding quite often, but I wouldn't consider myself, like, a, a, like a profession, like, not, not that I'm considering myself a professional, but, like, not that I'm an actual snowboarder, because I only go, like, a couple times a year, so I do know how to snowboard, and, yeah, it's fun. Until you, like, fall, that's not fun. Okay, everyone, I think that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed, and I will catch you all next time. Don't forget to tune in all month in July for the new Prima releases. We are going to be showing them on our classes, and um, it'll be in the newsletter. So make sure to sign up for the Prima newsletter and follow Prima on Facebook. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I will catch you all next time. Bye. Well, Ha! I just pyramid studied you.